everybody. Happy Monday! Hi, I'm Paola Aguillon. I'm a success coach and professional tango dancer in Austin, Texas. And happy Monday! We're going to make a great week of this, yes? Yes! So what I would like to talk about to do, uh, today is uh, sexual harassment training and why they don't work. And another thing that I want to put in like right in there and the reason why I'm talking about this this morning is because I believe that the universe will poke at you. And the universe will keep poking and if a poke doesn't work, you're going to start getting a slap on top of a, <laughs> on top of a head and, uh, or something that feels like a frying pan arriving. So I tend to pay attention to those things and I encourage you to pay attention to it too. Paolo Coelho calls it the language of the world. Uh, some people will call that signs. Other people will call that intuition or something in the air. Whatever that is, if something is poking at you, I encourage you to pay attention to it. So with the whole Me Too movement, uh, the fact that I'm a woman and the fact that I've worked in corporations in the past, uh, big corporations, we had sexual harassment training. We did. Uh, sensit uh, sensitivity training, sensibility training, uh, whatever they wanted to call it, we had it. And we sat for an hour. And basically what we got out of it is, don't harass your coworker, duh. Uh, what also we got out of it was maybe some specifics about certain companies. Like I worked for companies that didn't want people, their employees, to speak different languages on the floor. And when I say on the floor, it's when other customers are going to be able to see you. Those are very specific to some companies. And in that regard, it could be useful to integrate that in some training. That being said, I remember being sexually harassed at work. I remember my manager discarding it and considering our culture and the expectation that is put on women to react or to behave, <laughs> that training doesn't work because we're still getting harassed and people don't get fired for being harassed. People quit for being harassed. Uh, but they, the perpetrators typically just don't really, they get a slap on the face or uh, on the wrist, not on the face. You wish it was on the face sometimes, but it's going to be on the wrist most likely but really nothing is truly done. I mean, it happens, but when we look at how often it happens and what's actually done about it, mm -mm. so what I looked at is something that's been happening in a country in Africa that has a sexual assault rate, not abuse, not harassment, assault, an assault rate of 25% of women. And the reason why those women are being assaulted is because of that cultural ingrained expectation that if women are wearing something short or if they are being taken on an expensive dinner or if they are walking outside in the dark at night then they are up for grab that it is completely acceptable culturally for men to rape those women that's the cultural expectation the reason why sexual harassment training doesn't work in our country is because the cultural expectation of women is to be nice and smiling and agreeing and soft and, well, that's not who we are. We're not doormats. We're not here to please everybody and their mother or their father or their CEOs. That's why sexual harassment training don't work. Uh, because there is an expectation when it comes to women and when women, mostly women, it happens to men too. I'm not going to shut that one under the rug. But when people are the recipients of that harassment, there is an expectation of them culturally to play nice. Well, that doesn't work. Because if we're supposed to play nice, how can we go to our superior and let them know this is what happened to me and being taken seriously about it? How can we feel heard in a culture where we're supposed to shut up? It's not going to work. So what I started to work on is a new type of training where we can actually have some perspective taking. We can actually have an outlook on what it is to be who we are in our culture and what that involves to have space for people to speak and to actually have space and a safe space to share their experience in a way that they are going to feel heard, that it's going to be received. And, uh, and also an involvement from the leadership 
Because if a leadership is hiring people to train sexual harassment or sensibility training, whatever it is, and the number one goal is, I don't want a lawsuit and I don't want to lose productivity, it's not going to work either. Now, if a leadership of a company shows up and says, you are like family to me. And as long as you work here, I want you to know that you are in a safe space and we're going to work together to make sure that that space is safe to everyone. That is an intention. And that is something I've never heard from a company and I've worked for quite a few. So my ask for you today is if you know any company that is ready to have a different type of training when it comes to sexual harassment, sensibility or embracing people in general, I'm talking about gender, race, religion, uh, sexual orientation, I'm working on something different. So there you go. Um, drop me a line and let me know if you know of any company that would be interested. That's my ask today. I am very motivated about this. It's a one hour training that can actually make a difference. That is actually let people feel involved, that they are not wasting their time watching a video for an hour about stuff they already know. But for the people that are not aware of what it is to invade somebody's space, and for the people that really wish for other people to know what it is to have their space invaded uh, and for us to work together so there can be a connection so we can have that safe space call me until next week reach for the greatest version of yourself have a great one bye bye